I tested a ton of the most popular medical school resources so that you don't have to. And I'm ranking them from S tier down to D tier based on what actually moved the needle for me in med school and into my clinical training. If you're new here, my name is JR Smith and I'm an orthopedic surgery resident at the Mayo Clinic. And the only reason I was able to get this far is because I was able to sift through the noise and find the best resources to actually help me in the clinic and on test day. Quick note before we start, this is going to be a list of resources that I personally used, what I found most effective and what I think gives you the best return for your time and your money. Also, I'm going to give you a simple starter pack at the end that covers basically everything that you need without buying 10 different subscriptions. First up, Anki and specifically the Anking deck, which is definitely S tier. I used it every single day throughout medical school and it was the bread and butter of my study habits. You can track how many days in a row that you use it and I, <laughs> I literally had over 1000 days in a row when I was in med school. I was kind of an addict. But the reason that it's so nice is that it's built on evidence-based learning principles, especially active recall and spaced repetition. And that combination will make sure that you're actually remembering what you're learning. And Anki isn't just random facts on flashcards. The real superpower is that it trains pattern recognition and pattern recognition is a core skill in medicine. It's the foundation of a diagnosis and it's also the foundation of how we can move efficiently through patient care. The hardest part of Anki though is the learning curve and setup, but once it's running, Anki alone can take you very far. Now, this one is going to upset some people, but I don't care because it's true. <laughs> the first A textbook is D tier. Historically, this is how a lot of people prepared for boards and it's still iconic, but the way most students use it nowadays is to prop up their laptops. And passive reading is just not the most efficient way to learn compared to active techniques. That said, I understand why some people still keep it around. Some learners like having a book reference that they can quickly check when they have a question. And if you are someone who genuinely learns well from reading or thinks they learn well from reading, you might rank it higher. But for my learning style and for how modern med school studying works, it just doesn't compete with the other resources on this list. And one of those resources is next up, which is KinHub, and this is definitely A tier. It's my favorite anatomy resource, and I can't emphasize enough how important a strong foundation in anatomy is for everything else in med school. Their visuals are beautiful, the images are accurate, and the learning experience is genuinely engaging, which matters because if a resource isn't enjoyable, then you will not use it. And understanding how the human body works on a macro level makes physiology and pathology easier to organize in your mind especially if you're considering a surgical specialty. That foundation pays dividends for years. KinHub is one of those tools where the quality of the visuals and teaching makes the learning feel less painful and actually more intuitive. Next up is UWorld, which has to be S tier. In my opinion, this is the gold standard question bank. The best way to become a good test taker is to practice taking tests, and there's just no shortcut around that. A lot of students think that test taking is an innate talent, but most of it is actually skill and skill comes from reps. UWorld's questions are thorough and they map well to the style of the NBME and USMLE exams. The explanations are also a huge part of why it's S tier for me. I often learned more from reading why the right answers were right and the wrong answers were wrong than I learned from any standalone video. One caveat is that the UWorld questions can be longer and sometimes more reason throughable than the real exam which can include more direct, you know it or you don't type of questions. But as a test training tool, it is the best. The other most recognized question bank is AMBOSS, which is great, but just slightly below UWorld for me. So I'm listing it as an A tier resource. It mirrors the style of questions that you experience on the real tests. And it also has a strong knowledge section where you can read focused summaries on topics that you're weak on. I still don't think that their answer discussions beat UWorld, but AMBOSS becomes a great supplement, especially after you finish UWorld or when you want more reps in specific areas. And it has a phenomenal biostatistics and ethics section to the point where I'd call it the gold standard for learning how to approach those sections on the test. The last question bank and practice test resource on the list are the NBME self-assessments. I'd also rank these as an A tier resource and they are the closest practice experience to the real thing. And that alone makes them a no brainer near test time. The reason that they aren't S tier is because the explanations are not very great. You get a very accurate assessment of where you stand and what the test feels like, but you do not get the same quality teaching in the answer review that you get from UWorld or even AMBOSS for that matter. So the value is in the measurement and the realism, not necessarily in the learning. And speaking of learning, let's move back on to some primary learning resources, which brings me to one of my favorites, and that is Sketchy, which is definitely A tier. For microbiology and pharmacology, I don't think that anything touches it, and it remains the gold standard resource for those subjects. The storytelling and mnemonics stick so well that I still remember the sketches and think of them whenever I'm thinking about bugs and drugs in the hospital. They were so good that me and a few of my med school friends dressed up as the Pseudomonas sketch, and I even convinced my wife, Madison, to join, who also would just watch the videos with me for fun. 
but Sketchy also keeps expanding. It's not only micro and farm anymore, and some students really like the Sketchy style for other topics too. The key is to match the tool to your brain. If you learn well with story-based visuals and cartoons, Sketchy is an easy yes, and it is an absolute mandatory yes for micro and farm. Another video-based learning resource that I used a ton was Boards and Beyond, which is beats here for me. It's designed and taught by Dr. Jason Ryan, and he is genuinely a phenomenal educator. I used Boards and Beyond a ton because it paired great with the Onking deck. The workflow was super simple. Watch a high yield video, then unlock the cards tagged to that video, then let Anki take over for retention. But the reason that it's just a B is not because it's weak, but because I think another resource is a more modern version of the same idea. And that resource is Med School Bootcamp, which is A tier. It takes what used to be a one to two hour lecture and condenses it into something high yield and easy to follow, which matters a lot because time is limited in med school. It also integrates well with the Onking ecosystem, which is a big deal because integration reduces friction. When you're learning and your review systems talk to each other, your life becomes much more simple and you will appreciate that. Next up is Pathoma, which I rank as C tier. It's still a solid resource and for a long time, it was the standard for pathology but compared to newer platforms, it feels older and more limited because it's mostly pathology focused as its name implies. And you often need a little bit of physiology to truly understand why the pathology matters. If someone went to med school 10 years ago, they probably will rank this much higher and I respect that. But for me, with what exists now, it's just not the first tool that I'd reach for. Online med ed is another learning resource and it comes in as a B tier for me. I use it mostly during third year clerkships and it's a great whiteboard style resource that makes complicated topics more understandable. It's led by Dr. Dustin Williams, who is again, an amazing teacher. I didn't use it as heavily as some other tools because I personally preferred learning from my Anki workflow and other video styles. But if you like the chalk talk whiteboard approach and you want a clear clinical framework during your rotations, online med ed can be a strong fit. Next is Pixarize. I'm pitting Pixarize in C tier. It's helpful, especially for biochemistry, because biochem often turns into memorization and storytelling and mnemonics help a lot with that. And I actually used this during that block and it did what it needed to do. But the reason that it seats here is that it's just super niche and resource overload is real. If you can cover biochem effectively with a tool you're already using, then you can simplify your system and reduce the friction of jumping between multiple different resources. Pixarize isn't bad, it's just not essential once you have a streamlined system. Now, before we get into what I think is my favorite resource for performing in the clinic and the hospital, I wanna tell you about the sponsor of this video, Consensus. If you do any research in med school, Consensus would easily be an S tier resource. It's an AI powered academic search engine that looks through a massive database of peer reviewed papers and gives you a cited synthesis, making research easier than ever. Historically, we would have to spend hours digging through dozens of papers and extracting as much information as possible, which is nearly impossible when you're trying to balance your studies and clinical prep. But now research is easier than ever because consensus is built to speed up the slow parts of literature review and it keeps everything tied to real sources so that you can click through and verify unlike many other AI resources that I know. And one of my favorite features of consensus is the medical mode. For clinical work, which is basically everything that I do, medical mode limits consensus to about 50,000 trusted clinical guidelines and around 8 million articles from the top 1,000 medical journals. So for example, if I were to go and search, what is the rate of retear following quadriceps repair? I know that all of the details that it's gonna give me come specifically from journals that are highly regarded and highly reputable. They also have a real edge for finding rare and buried evidence. Their team shared a powerful story with me about a hospitalist who used consensus to quickly find a translated Japanese case report for a rare condition in a time sensitive situation. It's critical to rely on evidence to guide your patient management, and it's never been easier to review the literature for your own clinical decision making. So if you're doing a research project, crafting a presentation, or trying to answer a clinical question that feels like it has zero literature, you can try Consensus for free. Use the link in my description so that they know that you came from me. And if you want, you can also get 40% off their premium subscription. Now let's jump back to a few clinical tools that you should be aware of. To start, up to date, which is B tier for me. During clerkships, it was a reliable way to quickly understand a diagnosis, build a differential, and think through management steps. Having a curated clinical reference is valuable when you are new to patient care and trying to avoid missing something obvious. But the reason it's just a beats here is that we now have AI-assisted clinical tools that can be more interactive and more tailored to your exact question in real time. Up to date is still a strong foundation and a trusted reference, but I just think the workflow is evolving and students should evolve with it. And that brings me to Open Evidence and Doximity GPT, which are 100% S tier resources. 
They serve similar functions, so I would just choose one and stick with it, but they are essentially ChatGPT for medicine. Both are free for verified US healthcare professionals and medical students, and they actually have HIPAA compliant protocols. These tools are powerful because they let you ask specific clinical questions about a real clinical situation, then ask follow-up questions until the concept actually clicks. It's like having a personal teacher that won't ever think that your questions are dumb. That dialogue matters. It's more interactive, more targeted, and often more applicable than reading a generalized page when you are trying to make sense of a patient right in front of you. And the last resource on my list is PubMed, which is C tier for me. And I know this sounds wild because PubMed is literally medicine's library. If you're doing research, writing papers, or looking for specific evidence for something, PubMed is essential. But in medical school, your primary job is building the foundation. The foundational concepts do not change as quickly as the newest clinical trial, and your limited time is usually better spent mastering principles and passing your exams. PubMed becomes more useful when you have enough context to interpret what you're reading and apply it responsibly, which for many people is later in training. That's my tier list based on what I used and what I think gives the biggest return. Now let me give you a true starter pack. If you want the simplest setup that covers everything that you would ever need, I recommend four tools. The Onking Deck, UWorld, Open Evidence or Doximity GPT, and then either Sketchy or MedSchool Bootcamp. This way you get one system for long-term retention, one system for learning content, one system for practice questions, and one system for fast evidence-based answers in clinical settings. And two of the four resources are completely free. If you like this video, I bet that you would absolutely love this one where I talk about how you can actually make money as a medical student because you'll have a bit more time after using that starter pack. Keep evolving and I'll see you in the next one.